uh, today I'm going to tell you how to teach lesson 13 reflex 1000. And this lesson is to teach the beginners of lesson 8. And they the students from grade 6 to 8. And most of them have learned English in their high schools, but in their, uh, I mean, uh, elementary school or before that. So approximately about two years. However, the English proficiency is very low, so they are placed in the class T 101A, the first level of the transitional department, ELD, English Language De Development. And uh, so I can consider the phones beginners. Yes. And the objectives of this lesson is to provide them with the vocabulary on the four topics. Four topics. Right. And I use this activity one. What is the first topic? Everyone, you're my students now. Roots. What topic is that? Roots. 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 Talk louder. Say louder. Roots. Roots. Okay, everyone. Roots. 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 Good. And the next topic is? Vegetables. Vegetables. So vegetables. 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 Good. Next topic? Jewelry. Jewelry. Kind of hard. If you are a beginner, you don't know the word jewelry. Rings. So I will teach you the word jewelry. No, jewelry. Jewelry. And the next one? Water. Water? Drinks. 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 Good. Man. Good job. Right. Drinks. Uh, drinks. And the next? Junk food. Junk food? Oh, yeah. Yeah. so good. How do you know the junk food? No, in general. I never taught me. <laughs> the lesson, 30 words or 35 words a day, we jump into the class and we show the, the slide with the pictures and read, 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 read like that. But after learning this MA course, I know that we have to activate the students' knowledge before. So get them ready for the learning new vocabulary. And I will show them, I utilize the internet resources at SNA and I show them pictures and elicitate. Uh, what they have done before. So that is the first activity. So uh, I use graphic organizer. I will pair the students into two pairs with different topics here. You have working pairs in two minutes, filling as many words as possible. So and you work with her, please. And two of you one pair. And uh, uh, you please. Yes, two minutes, two minutes. <laughs> okay. So, what topics? So, are we learning verbs or nouns? Yeah. Yeah, so nouns. And you have learned before the nouns. How many types are there? Two. Two types. Countable. Yeah, countable nouns. Countable. And? And what? Uncountable nouns. nouns. Right. So, the main topic today is the yeah. noun. Capital yeah. nouns and uncountable nouns. And subtopic is about four topics that I have just shown you. Mm -hmm. Food, festival, jewelry. You want to review? Food, uh, right? Foods. Strings, what else? Jewelry and vegetables. And fruits. Yeah. Okay, thank you. It's just a sample, right? So after this activity, I will ask them to go to the board and write again and to see the group with the most words can get the bonus or they can get the. No, I'm not, I'm not rich enough, but I give them the reward tickets for being cooperative. It is the character education of this week, this month, right? So that is the first activity. The first activity. Activity one, activate, activating the background knowledge. And after that, I will teach them teaching vocabulary with picture, pictures. And then I will teach I will teach them like the Dr. Lee's method. And I will say the teaching techniques of Dr. Lee's method for the other students. Great. So teaching them using this Picture, singular, plural, a lot of pictures like this. Right. 
teaching vocabulary. <laughs> but actually, you are supposed to teach 35 vocabulary vocabularies in one day, but I split the lessons into two days and a half, and as a day, one week, just two lessons. So every day I teach them about half of the lesson, so 15 vocabularies. And this lesson is to consult the oh doctor. And saw the date, and I will give them other activities. So teaching vocabulary. So these are the vocabulary. <coughs> All right, beautiful teachers. Are you hungry? No. Uh -huh. Oh yeah, only nine thirty, right? Yeah, it's 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 supper. Nice. Teaching them on the vocabulary. Oh, so so slow. And activity three. I think my students enjoy this activity the most. I use the, the fly sweater. My students are from grade 6 to 8. They are very tactile. They like to move a lot. So first, I will show the picture and ask them to read what it is. So everyone, do you want to join this one? OK, read. The drawer. Mario, please. The drawer. Thanks. Dictionary. Uh, dictionary. Yeah. Uh, but what's the difference? <laughs> electronic. Electronic dictionary or e dictionary. Everyone go. E dictionary. E dictionary. Yes, I ask them to repeat, to read the word one more time. And then I pick two students to go to the board. Do you want to play this game for two minutes? Okay. Four volunteers. Volunteer first. <laughs> Daddy. <laughs> Another one, please. A boy. a boy, a boy, who wants to burst us, the strongest woman in the world here. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. I guess I have no choice anyway. <laughs> <laughs> right. You want to so, go to the front? It's my team. But I'm going to hit here. it, right? Right? Hit. I'm going to hit it first, right? Yeah, strike the hit in the bus. I will get the ball. But hit the word. how can you hit the word? You have to listen to your friends. Uh -huh. Your friends will. Read the word, and before you swap the word, you have to repeat the word. If you don't repeat, you have no score. Are you ready? Yes. Okay, wait, wait, wait. Betty and Ryan. Okay, Hannah. Umbrella. Uh, Umbrella. <laughs> Is it? Sofa. Um. Sofa. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Remember the article uh, on. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm so fun. Ryan? Ryan? Wheat. Wheat! Oh. <laughs> Building the squares. 
all of my students know how to do the bingo games very well. Yeah, right, 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 right. Sure. While, I don't remember all the of course, I will show it again. The master slide on the board. <laughs> right. Or they can look at their notebook. Right. They look at the notebook and they write. When they are writing, I remind them to write carefully. Yes, randomly, because the possibility of winning. Right? So 25 over 35. After they write, while they are writing, and I will go around and check the spell. Right. And later, I prepare 35 pieces of paper with different words here. I pick and I say. And they have to listen and then they Okay. on the paper. So if they can do like this, this or this way, they say bingo. And after they get bingo, I will help them one more time read the word. And I write the word on the board and everyone has to repeat one more time the words. Right? And then I will take I will take check the paper for the spelling before I give them uh, the bonus. Right. That is the third activity. Uh, the fourth activity, bingo games. And uh, like one more, uh, uh, another variety of this game, you can read the words individual, or you can read the words in sentence, in sentences. Like, I like to eat vegetables. Now, vegetables. vegetables. I'll have to check. So they have to listen to the teacher, uh, read the the sentence and pick the noun. Check. Yes. And the next activity, oh, it requires a lot of effort to prepare this activity. Sure. It took me sure. four hours. <laughs> this activity, right? So look at the topics. Do you, do you know the Jeopardy games? Yeah. Okay, all of them are familiar with. Them. Right. And now the topics in the lesson. What is topic one, everyone? Up one out. Louder! Up one out. Ah, Ryan, you don't repeat, you got a minus. Everyone, topic one. Up one out. Topic two. Topic three. Vegetables. Say again. Vegetables. Everyone, vegetables. Vegetables. Topic four. Food and drinks. Ah, good. And topic five. Some vocabulary don't depend on. What belong to the topics. So others. So I will split the class into two groups. Two groups. So let's play like one, two, three, four. Four students on the front front rows. Four students. Right. Uh, group A and. <coughs> So, have to decide which group will go first. Okay, great. With what on 
Put on four hundred. But what topics? Let me choose. Fruits, fruits. Fruits, four hundred. Uh, you have to make a question and answer. Oh, easy. Oh, easy. Easy. Yeah. Question and answer. Out of time. Time five, four, five, three. Four. Who is the one who came out of trouble? You. Ah, uh, question and answer. Oh, that's a lot. Time's up. Okay, so what what do you choose first? Orange? Orange. Orange. Let's check. Oh, good job. Ask and answer, please. Who does he want to be an orange one? He wants to be an orange for his wife. Okay, that's it. Who does he want to kill an orange for? <laughs> Again. Who does he want to be an orange for? Not for, right? Not yes, no question. Yeah. So, uh, like this, they keep on playing. Oh, 15 minutes. Yeah, right. So <laughs> we have uh, different oh. activities like this. It is a Jeopardy game. It's a picture. I spend a lot of time. It's okay. You, you can keep going through it. I think we can do the conversation quickly. I know. Uh, uh, that is a uh, this activity. Yes. And uh, so in short, I design. Uh, five activities. The first activity is to activate the students' background knowledge by giving them the graphic organizer uh, and filling the words. And the second one is to teach the vocabulary by using features and with a lot of repetition, with gestures, with reflex, but I skip that part. And activity three, the vocabulary sweater. It is one more time for the students to pronounce the word, to hear the words. And activity four, uh, the bingo game. This game allows the student to practice the spelling first. They have to write, and then um, they have to choose the vocabulary that they want to study. And I usually encourage the students to choose the difficult vocabulary to learn, instead of finding easy ones. And activity five is the Jeopardy game. This game is to help them with the vocabulary and also with the structures, the patterns that they have learned. And these activities seem to be very controlled, very, very controlled. And I think the next step is to find the free practice, that is to have them make a conversation by using the patterns that they have learned. And this is lesson Lesson 13, so they are supposed to have learned 11 patterns. 11 patterns. So I will draw a loop and list the 11 patterns over there, and then I make a conversation A, B, A, B, A, B. Thank you very much, you're welcome. And then we'll have to use the, today's vocabulary with all the patterns that I've learned to make conversations. First, they're going to work in pairs, and after that, they come here and present. Thank you very much. That's all for my presentation. Okay. So, did you want to ask her some questions about, like we talked yesterday about, like why did she choose that sequence, or um, you know, how does the theory support the ideas that she chose? <laughs> Yes, you're right. You're right. So I said that it is a consolidation test. Uh, which activity uh, which activity you consider to be on first day and which activity you consider to be It's not a first day. So after teaching some vocabulary, you can design activities for the ten or fifteen vocabularies. Right. Activities like this can be used for all lessons in teaching vocabulary. But but for I mean for teaching the nouns the comfort nouns like this, not the abstract nouns. This is the lesson for beginners. Yes, beginners. Lesson 13, it's reflex one comfort. Nine minutes? Nine minutes? Yeah, no. How long? Two days. Ah, I so told you that. Two, two days. Yeah. So the first day you teach what? Huh? What will you teach the first day? 
the first day I will split the vocabulary into another list. So today I show you all the activities that you can use to explore the lesson. It's not a lesson for one day. So is it kind of cum uh, cumulative? So the uh, requirement is the teacher vocabulary in 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. So now the presentation is 15 minutes. Am I right? Sure. Presentation is 15 minutes. Yes, it's a part of the teacher that we can report. How can you finish? So 15 minutes we did the part of course, you know. So um, how would how would you in so you would teach the vocabulary and then you teach the patterns and structures and so patterns already. This is a so now the the patterns already. They know the 11 patterns, so when they come to the free, so I have shown you all the activities to tackle the vocabulary, vocabulary problem, and then later the free conversation, I will review the patterns over here and then make conversation. What are the patterns? Can you give an example? We all got the show. Reflex teachers now. Right, reflex teachers now. You leave you now? Alright, so I give you one verb. One verb. I want to be in the same. Right, one verb. Like to to learn. Everyone say to learn. To learn. What is pattern one? Do you want now? Yeah, say do your verb now. Make a sentence. Do you learn English? Go. Do you learn English? Do you learn English? Yes. Yes, I learn English. Yes, I learn English. Yes, I learn English. No. No, I don't learn English. <laughs> okay, yes, no. Pattern two, please. You. Do you. What do you hear? Say, what do you learn? What do you learn? Merci, au revoir, bonjour. I learn French. Very good. No, I learn French. I learn French. Yeah, that's the way I go around the pattern. Say, do you hear? What do you hear? And then we have do you hear? Nine, the one, two, and verb. Yeah, just a yes no question and another a question for what and who. What and who? It is pattern, uh, pattern 10. Pattern 10, the subject is you. You. And pattern 11, the subject, the same patterns, but the subject is he or she. And so, have you used the, the patterns in the vocab lesson? Where, where did they come in place in this so, lesson? The, at the last step. Mm -hmm. The last step. I review the patterns and then and then I uh, I ask them to make conversations by using these patterns and vocabularies. Mm -hmm. What I have learned. Mm -hmm. okay. Okay. Do you have a sample conversation or do you have to? It's just like this. The first student, it is a uh, uh, formula. Uh, right. I would like to. Excuse me, I don't have to ask the question. Yeah, I would like to ask you some question. Sure. Yes, the book for them. 
This is the first. This is the first activity, and through this activity, you can assess the student already. This kind of uh, what formative, formative assessment yeah. happen everywhere, anytime. And the summative assessment is questions and answer, and you can also show pictures and ask them to label the pictures. Right. Write the vocabulary under the beneath the pictures. So you would cover all of this content over two class periods, two yes. 90 minute class periods. Yes. yes. Authentic material is a kind of <coughs> supplementary because reflex teachers must finish this one first before they can go to the supplementary. We cannot do other ways. But I think you can only do it in the school. You are right. You're not allowed to. That's right. <laughs> Show and they approve anything that's wrong. That's right. Okay, great job. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> You guys ask excellent questions too. This is the tone box. Students, a table. Actually, 
actually, uh, when I give the student table, uh, they don't have the vocabularies here. This is the blank. This is the blank. They just have the images, the IPS blank, IPS column, and vocabularies blank, vocabularies column. So and what's IPS? What IPS is uh, international. Okay. International phonetic alphabet. Yes. Okay. <coughs> Okay. And, and, and what, what, what level were the students? The yeah, age the beginner. Of beginner. The beginner. And age? Yes. Age. Age. Um, uh, actually, I have taught. I have. I have taught the student and um, adults, some adults, and some children. But all they are beginner. They don't know about English. Okay. But they have already studied about IPF at the opening lesson, so they know how to write it. Okay. And you see. Uh, I don't give them the vocabulary. I just spell the word and they will fill in the blank with the word. Right? This way is how the student recognize the form of the word and how the word constructs by each letter. Right? Um, the next, I will have students with pronunciation. How to pronounce this word? How to pronounce this word? Okay? Uh, when I pronounce this word, I also write the IPS on the word. For example, a letter. I will write the IPS uh, <coughs> of letter. I will write a word for them like this. Not class, of letter. Of letter. And then they will repeat. Okay? Of letter. Not class, of letter. Of letter. Again? Of letter. And I continue up to finish uh, five items. Five items. And this is how them recognize also. The letters, the construct of the vocabulary, and also the pronunciation of that word. And then I will have them remember this word by practicing uh, maybe four times. Four times. They will have four times to uh, repeat this word. The first time, they will look at three columns the image, the IPS, and also the vocabulary to read. The next time, they will cover the vocabulary. Just look at the IPS and the image. At this uh, at stage, they can recognize the sound. They right? recognize how we pronounce this item. The next, they will cover the IPS and vocabulary. They just look at the picture. Don't look at the IPS and vocabulary. This way has done. Whenever they see the image of this item in uh, real life, they can produce the word. They can produce the word whenever they meet the image. <coughs> and the last, the last one, they have one chance to produce, um, to produce the word naturally. One, one student, they will work in pair. One student will describe the word, and another student will produce the word, will say the word of that item. How, how does the student um, give them the clue? You, okay, they will describe. They will do gesture. You don't do gesture. Then, for example, uh, like the way I have done at first, say it like this. What? And they say it like this. What? Okay, just like that. Mm. Uh, and it's not. Uh, what student? Don't look at anything. Just uh, look at the actions and guess the word. Just like that. Next part. I intend to teach a student the word about the actions related to these items. Maybe uh, they have known this item, but they don't know how the English use this item, okay? Uh, this has some actions. Maybe the student will, will not know how we call this in English. They just know the items because they have just uh, studied, okay? Uh, at, this, at this stage, the student have to write down the items next to the action. Just write down the items, okay? This way, uh, the items they have studied already and they have remembered. So it's easy to write out the items beside the action here. This say, uh, this activity <coughs> helps them writing because before they just uh, reading, speaking, but now they will practice writing. Okay. Uh, <coughs> next part. Uh, the student also receive a table with three columns. The first with some situations. The second column with the column of action. And the last one with a remark column, okay? Um, the first, first student, the first task student have to do is taking out the verb, the key verbs in the situation in the first column. For example, the first situation, the vegetables 
are so wet, can you help me to strain them off? And they have to take out the verb, strain off, strain off. The next situation, they have to take out the verb, boil. You see the actions, okay? The actions that they have, uh, they study today. And continue uh, after they finish five situations. This way, uh, and then the student will discuss in group based on the information in the passage and they guess the meanings. Guess the meanings first before the teacher gives the true meaning. Uh, by this way, the student, um, by this way, the students can, um, can guess the meaning of the word. They will practice guessing the meaning of the word from the passage and they will recognize that they can know the words based on the relevant information, not just based on the uh, based on looking up the book dictionary or asking the teacher they can do it by themselves okay and next <coughs> after the guess meaning the teacher will give the the correct meanings and then we will give them the IPS also uh, they will write they can write the meanings in remark column and they can write the IPS in remark column also they will practice pronouncing these words by uh, first looking at the action, the verb of action here. Next, looking at um, the the IPS, and the last one looking at the meaning the first time. Um, next, they will cover the meaning. Just look at the IPS. Just look at the IPS and look at the the verb. Then cover IPS the meaning. Just look at the verb and the last one. They just look at the word, okay, and uh, spell the word and say the word. Um, actually, I intend to put one more column, one more column where the the students can stick can stick some pictures of the action here, uh, stick some pictures of the actions here, appropriately with the actions we have here, so that they can recognize uh, produce the word based on the image. Um, and the last part, uh, that the student have studied with the nouns, the verb, and then they will combine. <coughs> they will combine, okay? The teacher will give the noun. The class will say the verb. Will say the verbs, okay? For example, I say uh, a ladle. The student will say to ladle out, to ladle out. I say a calendar. The student will say straight enough. They see uh, the couple, the pair of verb and noun, verb and noun go together. And then the teacher will give the verb, the student gives the noun, okay? Uh, next we have, I will separate class into two groups to check if uh, each student, to make sure that each student in class know, know the verbs and know the noun and how they go together, okay? The teacher, I will give them the image. The image, uh, I put, I left them, I left them. Um, I will write down the image. Group A, we say the noun. Group B, we say the verb, okay? And it changed. I will show the image. Group B will say the noun and group A will say the verb. Okay? They know how to combine the verb and the noun together and they can know the association of the verb and the noun. Okay? Uh, the, the, last, the last activity uh, the last activity is we have we have uh, we will student we work in pair. One student, we have A and B. One student and use the verb and say the sentence. I want to, and B will say, let's use. Okay? One, two, you say verb and you say noun. For example, A will say, I want to boil some water. And B will say, let's use a kettle. Okay? This way, have the student apply the vocabulary in real situation at home. For example, at home, when their mother wants to boil some water, they will say, let's use the kettle. And they know they have to look for a kettle to help their mother to boil water. Okay? You see, uh, about my activities, about my lesson, and the homework. I intend uh, to give them the homework. They have studied uh, some nouns here and some verbs here. And their homework is find out more meanings of these items of these actions, find out more meanings and find out more situation of other meanings will be used. Okay? This is a practice for them 
use the collocation of that verb or look for the synonyms or something like that of those vocabularies. As you see my lesson plan. Do you have any questions? <laughs> Is this the same time period? Would this be covered in two classes of 90 minutes? Yes. How, how long would you take to cover all of this content? Um, um, I will. I intend to take this in 60 minutes. Everything in 60 minutes? Yes, 60 minutes. Because uh, when I talk here, it seems com confused, complicated. But actually, I applied it for my teacher, uh, for my students. And they can do it in within 60 minutes because everything is clear, is clear to them. And this is so, maybe it's just a few vocabularies. Actually, I have uh, I gave them more than this, over 20 words. Not just 10 words like this. And then I have a question from the, um, I think it was this one you said they would identify the verb. Yes. But that was kind of like towards the beginning. How are they able to identify the verb? Ah, because there's, okay, in this, we have some, um, maybe some uh, popular verbs that they have known. They just take out the strange verb they, that they don't want. Take out a strange verb. And I think that, uh, and I'm sure that they will take out a strange verb in this.